Allah! I don't know what's happening. I was nearly thrown out of my bed. Look at all the lights moving in the valley. Where in the valley? Down at the bottom of the valley, down by Zion. See all mine workings. Zion Street's gone and, and old Gwinger and Shamsi's dead. And they're all down the digging and, and Dr. Davis and Mr. Price and, and Mrs. Johnsman Pleasant was screaming like a pig until a doctor slapped her face and then, and then... Thomas, try and answer my questions. Now listen to me carefully. You say the old Vaughan workings have collapsed. Yeah. Is the old road gone? Yeah. How many cottages in Zion Street? They're all gone. Mrs. Griffiths and the Bevanses and old Daddy Waldos. You can see his rocking chair stuck on Mrs. Probert's chimney. They all slide down together. Lord, have mercy. You must go and get dressed. Is it broke bad, Doctor? Well, it's not broke good, Mrs. Bevan. Dr. Davis, quick man! Leave me alone now. Go on, you. Go on, you. There's someone hurt proper. And a chest of drawers on top of him. He was swearing and cursing. Jack Richards. Jack Richards. He's got his pipe still in his mouth. There, there, boy. -o. We'll find ma'am soon. Ma'am won't leave you. No. <laughs> And how are you this terrible night, Mrs. Lewis? Oh, I'm okay, Miss Gertrude. Mrs. Bevan's broke her arm, and they can't find Orwin Harris. She's buried. So this is one of your acts of God, Mr. Price. He moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform, I will say that. It is all part of the pattern. Why did the workings cave in, you ask? We do not know. Only God knows. Why did the cottages crumble and tumble in thunderclouds of dust and little bits of old brick? We do not understand. Only God understands. He understands everything. Well, he didn't understand Jack Richards. Old Jack wanted to live. Why, he'd just done his pools, man. It is not for us to say who shall be called Amabile Hughes. And mind your spade, man. Ours up to reason why, I suppose. Well, I am reasoning, see? I'm reasoning that the gallery should have been filled in before the worn pit was abandoned. You can't blame God for these ruins. These aren't his murders. All you can blame is the criminal negligence of profit makers who don't care a damn in hell about the people that make their profits for them. It's the Morgan Vaughans and all their sort who smashed this street and left old Jack Richards to die all mucked up in his blood. Ours but to do or die. I die for the Morgan Warns. <laughs> Dr. Davis! Dr. Davis! She'll do, she'll be all right. There, there, what did I tell you, boy? Ma'am's home now. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Price. How many souls have we lost, Mr. Price? Only two. It is a miracle, Miss Morgan Vaughan. We have much to be thankful for. Perhaps more for the help and guidance you give us than for anything else. My sisters and I will, of course, take personal responsibility for the rehousing. The old workings of the Vaughan mine are the cause of the disaster. Naturally, we must see justice done. I'm sorry, Miss Morgan Vaughan, but you must understand that your account can't even begin to meet this liability. We have securities. Your overdraft is already slightly in excess of the value of your securities. In that case, our brother Owen, as head of the family, will undoubtedly honor the obligation. The rebuilding of these cottages is our responsibility. Will you please speak to him on the telephone? Mm, if you wish it, Miss Vaughan. 
Yes, I do. Listen, Williams. If you let those old harpies think they're going to get another penny out of me, I'll take every vestige of my business out of your hands. Prentice! I don't care whose idea it was. Your duty is to say no, and go on saying no. Yes, of course I understand the position. As far as I'm concerned, the whole village can fall in the mine. She's there with you now, isn't she? All right. You tell her here and now that I'm coming down this afternoon to stop this head of the family nonsense once and for all. Good day. We're going down to Coombe Glass after lunch. Uh, we go by car. We, oui, Mr. Morgan Vaughan? You mean you want me to come? That's what I said. I've had enough of coping with my sisters by myself. Oh, but, well, I can't be of much use. I don't know them. Exactly. This is a business interview, and as my secretary, you know as much about my business as I know myself. You'll be able to support my state. I, I can't afford to throw away another penny on this philanthropic nonsense. All right. Bring up the garage and get the car sent around. Come glass. I find it all rather sinister. No, no, it's just derelict. Dead as mutton. Nothing sinister about it. Except my grandfather's statue. seen it all. I was standing outside the morning star, and I seen him lift up a stone. Who? He lifts it up. Who did? It was... Who was it, Daddy Waldo? You didn't see his face, did you? You couldn't have seen his face. He was too far off. No, I didn't see who it was. <gasps> Mr. Owen Vaughan, what will you think of us? There's never such a thing happened in Kumdlas before. In the middle of the afternoon, too. What the hell does it matter what time of day it was? Well, well, it was an accident now. Thank heaven you're not hurt proper, Mr. Morgan Vaughan. Oh, Mr. Morgan Vaughan, what will you think of us, Mr. Morgan Vaughan, Emperor of Cum Glass? Shall we kiss it better for you, Mr. Morgan Vaughan? <laughs> you keep to your place, Mabry Hughes. Can you tell me where to find the doctor, please? Yes, the house up at the corner there, Dr. David Davis. Thank you very much. Why shouldn't I say what I've seen, Polly Probert? Daddy, listen, I tell you. I tell you, I saw Thomas throw that stone man clear as clear. Do you want to make trouble for him, Daddy? He's tough. He don't know what he's doing. But I've seen him. Oh, come on, you old teapot. You. Oh. It should heal in a day or two. You may have a headache for a bit, though. I should get him to rest as much as you can, Miss Prentice. I'll do my best. Is this the normal way of greeting visitors in Cornwall? Well, they've always been very nice to me. <laughs> Maybe they didn't like my face. It's my face they throw stones at. Oh, come along for heaven's sake. Sure, you're all right. Yes. Thank you very much, Doctor. Have you paid him? Oh. I was with the road to collapse and brought down the cottages. Pity it wasn't my old village.
You don't look too good, Mr. Ball. Why don't you lie down for a minute or two? No, of course I'm not going to lie down. <laughs> yeah, that young cover the doctor can't, can't even tie a bandage properly. Yeah. Okay. I'll fix it. I trust I'm not intruding. Mr. Vaughan's had an accident. This is Isabel, Claire, my sister. She has a genius for putting an unpleasant interpretation on things. Still your old delightful self, Owen. May I ask who this young person is? I'm Mr. Vaughan's secretary, Claire Prentice. How do you do, Miss Prentice? Please sit down. My sisters will join us in a minute. How did this accident occur, Owen? Well, the committee of welcome for a stir of the car. Oh, oh, how dreadful. They wouldn't do such a thing. They couldn't have known who it was. I don't care whether they knew or not. I've had my head cut open. What? I've had my head cut open. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know we had a visitor. This is my sister Maud. Miss Prentice, Owen's secretary. Oh, how charming. And when am I to congratulate you? I don't understand. She doesn't understand. I'm afraid you'll have to mouth your words, Miss Prentice. My sister's stone deaf. Oh, I'm so sorry. There's no need for sympathy, Miss Prentice. We're quite content to have mastered our afflictions sufficiently to lead busy and useful lives. Perhaps Miss Prentice would like to wash after her journey. Oh, cut the social stuff. I'm here on business. Claire, where's my dispatch case? You had it last. Uh, I left it in the hall. It's never there, is it? Are you? I'm Claire Prentice, Mr. Morgan Vaughan's secretary. I I'm sorry if I startled you. You see, I... I can't see. I'm blind. Miss Prentice tells me that she's your secretary, Owen. Very interesting. Does she always travel with you? Certainly, when I'm on business. Are you on business? In this house? What else do you think I came for? I'm just waiting for you, that's all. Oh, I see. You've come to discuss family affairs. I've come to stop the indiscriminate pledging of my credit. I may be old-fashioned, but I always thought family affairs were discussed only among the family. You put me in a very embarrassing position, Miss Morgan Vaughan. You must blame my brother for that. It was wrong of him to imagine that we should discuss our private affairs before... you forgive me. Any stranger. You'll break your neck on that high horse of yours one of these days, Gertrude. Owen, please. Maud! Yes? Will you take Miss Prentice into the library? Very well. I'm sure she won't mind. You won't think me very discourteous. But we're a very old and proud family. I'm sure you'll understand. You've made it only too clear. You wish me to leave, Mr. Vaughan? Yes, I... I suppose it's better. Yes. And look out the Morgan Vaughan account while you're waiting, will you? Mr. Williams tells me you were regrettably rude to him on the telephone, Owen. Now, look here, Gertrude. I can see through these tactics of yours. I'm the small boy again, eh? You're the big sister, telling me I'm uncouth. I had a different mother. What can we expect from the son of a cook? If you insist on behaving like the son of a cook, what other treatment do you expect? Isabel, please. Since you came of age, we've always regarded you as head of the family, Owen. That's right. The golden goose. Maybe it's my common blood that's made me a good businessman. I've made money, which is more than the old man ever did. He lost his hand over fist. Well, I'm not throwing good money after bad. Not with a doubtful compliment of being called the head of the family. Owen. Don't try and stop me. I've been wanting to say this for years. Head of a family. Head of what family? The Morgan Vaughans, owners of a derelict mine and a sycophantic peasantry. Owen, I warn you. I'm ready for a showdown. Charming phraseology. That's what's wrong with you. All three of you. You're, you're antiquated. You're living in the feudal system. Particularly you, Gertrude, with your beastly owls hooting all over the place. They ought to be shot for a start. I'm fed up with a lot of you. Ladies of the manor, bravely conquering your infirmities with the lick spittle of a lot of down and outs. You beast, you low beast! coming here to insult us with your fancy lady. Maud? Control yourself. Maud's right, Gertrude, that horrible painted young woman. The charitable Morgan Vaughan's. Poor little Claire. So it's an idea. You're all behaving like very unpleasant children. 
Abuse achieves nothing. Owen, you came here to discuss business. The question of these cottages and the Morgan Vaughan responsibility. I tell you, there's nothing doing. We've given our word the cottages shall be rebuilt. And nothing will induce us to go back on that word. You'll have to find another golden goose, Gertrude. You've had roughly 20,000 out of me in the last five years. What are you doing here? Thomas, my mother told me to bring in the coal. Who is your mother? Beatty. She looks after the ladies. You mean you live here? They let me. They're good. If you think that, why did you throw the stone at Mr. Morgan Vaughan? Tell me, Thomas, why did you throw the stone? Mr. Owen isn't going to give money to all the people that have lost their homes. He's bad. Miss Maud says he isn't fit to live. Miss Maud is good to me, so I didn't want him to live, and so I threw the stone. How did you know Mr. Owen wouldn't give the money? My mother heard the ladies talking after they see Mr. Williams the bank. Mr. Owen hit me when I was little. He hit me on the face. Thomas, go back to the kitchen. Hmm. Tea is served in the drawing room. Hello, I've come to fetch you to tea. Well, you'll never know who you're going to meet in this house. <laughs> I'm practically one of the family. Oh. I should never have thought that. Perhaps I've given the wrong impression. What I meant was that the Morgan Bonds have done so much for me that I feel this is my real home. I see. My father was a miner in the Vaughan pit. He was killed. The Morgan Bonds paid for my education and looked after me until I qualified. Oh, yes, Thomas has told me how good they are. Now I think I'd like some tea. I'm so sorry. I'm sure you must be ready for your tea, Miss Prentice. Thank you. I'm ready for anything. Sorry. How's your head? Terrible. Oh, I'm so sorry. I do hope you haven't got any more business to do. Oh, no. That's settled. Your tea. Thank you. Sugar? No, yes. It looks as if you'll have to let me drive you back. My brother will not be leaving tonight, Miss Prentice. Dr. Davis is most insistent that he should have a night's rest after that blow on the head. I see. When can I get a train? You can't get out of this godforsaken place at this time of day without a car. Maybe Dr. Davis will drive me to the station. Well, I'd love to, but... Dr. Davis has patients to see at five o'clock. It seems that you'll be forced to accept our hospitality, Miss Prentice. Oh. Uh, thank you. It's a little awkward. You see, I have no night things with me. We can discuss those matters later. Of course you'll stay, Claire. You look fascinating in white flannel. Uh, you'll excuse me, but as Miss Isabel says, I have patience to see at five. I'd like to change that dressing before you leave in the morning, Mr. Morgan Vaughan. And you will stay the night, too. Let's have a party. I'm leaving here at six o'clock in the morning. We're perfectly capable of changing a dressing. You should know that, David. <laughs> the Morgan Vaughan sisters are almost qualified doctors, Miss Prentice. Dr. Davis exaggerates, of course. But we learned a great deal of medicine when we were helping him with his studies. If anyone's going to fiddle about with my bandage, Claire can do it. She's a genuine trained nurse. You're a nurse? Yes, part-time during the war. Does it surprise you? No, I don't think so, really. I think you could do anything you wanted to. Maybe now you want to see your room. I'm sure you'd like to freshen up. Oh, very thoughtful. Goodbye, Dr. Davis. It's been a most interesting experience meeting you. Au revoir, please. always been like that? No, that happened at the time of the subsidence. Although it looks dangerous, they assure us it's perfectly safe for the time being. It would need a structural alteration to put it in position again, and we don't feel justified in using the labour when so many people need a roof to their heads. 
Would you mind going first, Miss Prentice? It takes me a little time. First door on the right, past the chest of drawers, Miss Prentice. I'll be with you in a moment. Here is the nightdress, Miss Prentice. Not flannel. You must be on very intimate terms with my brother to allow him to discuss such things in mixed company. I resent that remark, Miss Morgan Vaughan. I'm Mr. Vaughan's secretary, no more and no less. I'm afraid we've had no previous experience of the duties of secretaries. All I can say is you must have very unpleasant minds. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Vaughan. After all, I am your guest, but you know you're not making things easy for me. Mr. Vaughan's your brother. You must know as well as I do that he... <laughs> when he says whatever comes into his head. And he usually regrets it afterwards. I'm glad you realize that trait in him, Miss Prentice. Since you're concerned with him in business, you must know how generous he's always been to his old sisters. And because he thinks generosity is unmanly, he puts himself in the worst possible light. Sometimes he makes us feel like the daughters of the horse leech. But we understand him and appreciate him. I'm glad. He has an unswerving loyalty to the family. Nothing can shake that. Nothing? I hope not. We should be most distressed. Dinner is at seven o'clock. Miss Prentice. Must you shout, Owen? Now, don't you start. I tell you I want to be left alone. My head's splitting. But you're still determined to leave at daybreak, Owen? There are two things I have never been more determined of in my life. One is that I'm leaving at daybreak, and the other is that I said my last word about money. Not another penny do you nag out of me, any one of you. I can't make it any plainer, so now clear out and leave me alone. As you wish. Dinner will be served at seven. Is there anything else to require? Your secretary, for instance. You wicked old bag. Miss Maud, Miss Gertrude would like to see you in her room. There, that's better. Yes. Why did you do that? I've got a lot of doors for us to be alone in this house. Um, why do you want to be alone? I've got to talk to you. I suppose you know why I brought you here. It's becoming more obvious. I brought you here because I haven't got the guts to face those women alone. You know me as a hard businessman, don't you? Well, I've had to appear hard to get through, but really I'm like a crab and soft inside. You've seen this house, you've seen them. Oh, they're the genuine article, all right. High-born mother and all. But I'm the son of their father and his cook. Legitimate, but beyond the pale. Gertrude was 17 when I was born. She spent the next 17 years impressing on me that the only way to wipe out the stain was to follow in father's footsteps. Not down the kitchen stairs, of course, but up the steps to heaven. Gertrude's heaven, mind you. A place where one gives all to the poor and thanks God one was born a Morgan Vaughan and able to do it. What happened to your mother? 
Well, she did what was only fitting. She died when I was born. Well, as I say, I stuck it out for 17 years, and then I cleared out. But it was too late. Why? Because they got their grips on me. They got me so tied up, I didn't know the difference between duty and oh, feeble-mindedness. <laughs> well, you know now. You stuck it out this time. Do you think they'll let it go there? Oh. They'll go on and on and on until they convince me I'm wrong. What do you want me to do? Stand by me. See, you're normal. You're, you're part of the outside world. Just stick around and let me look at you sometimes and remember that there is an outside world. Will you? Of course. Who is it? What do you want? Thought you were locked in here, Owen. Gertrude wants you to take a glass of sherry wine before dinner. She's asked Miss Prentice to join us. She's in there with you, isn't she? Take a note, her. You will come, won't you? You promised, didn't you? I promised. Come in, Miss Prentice. Come and sit down by me, won't you? I'm afraid I've been very neglectful in my duties as hostess today. You must excuse me. Let me try to make amends. Isabel, will you get the sherry, please? I'll serve Miss Prentice first, Owen. Well, let me take the tray for you. No, you're our guest. You sit down. Let me wait on you. Oh. There's nowhere to sit. I'm sure you'll appreciate this wine, Owen. It's the last bottle of Father's Amontillado. I feel very honored. I hope you'll always be honoured in this house, Owen. Well, aren't you having one? Much as I should like to drink your health, Owen, one can't play tricks with rheumatoid arthritis. Well, can't you? Oh, well. Mmm, <clears throat> tastes cork to me. <laughs> That's sacrilege, Mr. Vaughan. It's wonderful, Sherry. I've never met a self-styled connoisseur of wine who hadn't some fault to find. To prove a sensitive palate, I presume. You know Wales, Miss Prentice? No, not very well. I don't know the South at all. It has a curious and arresting quality, all its own. We very much hope that Owen will allow himself, and you, to stay with us for at least a couple of days, so that you may see something of it. Can I have another glass, Isabel? I'm afraid not, Owen. There's hardly time. Oh. you, Miss Gertrude? Yes, it is, BT. We'll have our reading now. I'm going to bed. I've had enough for one day. I've been driving for hours and hours. Slag heaps and pit heads and vile black hills. <laughs> How vile was my valley. I'm sick of all this Celtic claptrap about Wales. My Wales. Land of my fathers. Well, as far as I'm concerned, my fathers can keep it. You can tell he's a Welshman by the lilt in his voice. Little black backbiting hypocrites, all gab and wine, black beetles with tenor voices and a sense of sin like a cripple's hump. Cum glass, full of senile morons and vicious dwarfs. Old toes of women, clucking at you like blousy hens. Self-righteous little humbugs with a hoil. Old men with beards in their noses, cackling at you. Blue gums and clackers. Oh, the mystical Welsh. <laughs> About as mystical as slugs. You must forgive my brother, Miss Prentice. He sees in cum glass so many of his own endearing qualities. He looks just like his mother. I don't know who's got the dirtiest mind, Maud. 
You are the devil. He's religious, too. This is a nightmare, Claire. Anyone never wakes up from it. Have you finished all you want to say, Owen? Yes, Gertrude. Then please sit down. Shall I read a passage to the Psalms, Thomas? Yes. The Lord shall destroy thee. He shall take thee and pluck thee out of thy dwelling. Thou shalt cry, but there shall be none to help thee. Yea. Even unto the Lord shalt thou cry, but he shall not hear. Please remain where you are. That's all for tonight, BT. You can go now. Good night. Good night, Miss Gertrude. What is it, Mr. Vaughan? Please clear the couch. Mr. Vaughan's very ill. Miss Vaughan, I want blankets and as many hot water bottles as you have, and I want them at once. Miss Prentice asks for blankets and hot water bottles. Will you fetch them, please? What's the doctor's telephone number? Are you really a trained nurse, Miss Prentice? Please tell me the number, otherwise I shall ask the exchange. Cum glass three. Cum glass three, please. Will you bring me a glass of water and some rock salt? Miss Don't Prentice. argue, Miss Vaughan. Please do as I say. Dr. Davis, this is Claire Prentice. Can you come over right away? Mr. Morgan Vaughan's been taken very ill. Hmm? Oh, no, it's nothing to do with his head. Now, please listen to me. This is an urgent case with violent convulsions from stomach pain. I suggest you bring a hypodermic and strychnine. None that carries. No, not one. Good evening, Beatty. Where is Mr. Morgan Vaughan? You feeling better now? I'm still alive, if that's what you mean. My stomach's full of hyenas. Good evening, Miss Bridges. How's the patient now? Oh, he's much easier. Oh, he's fine. He's dandy. He can breathe. He's in agony and he wishes you were all dead. Am I thinking? I think you'll be all right now. All right? I vomited like a hippo. What have you been eating? Brimstone, white ants, ground glass, rat poison. What's the matter? I'll have to take it quietly for a day or two, you know? Hanky panky, hocus pocus, professional soft soap and treacle. And Goethe looming there like a cheated vulture. I'm clearing out in the morning. I'm glad you're feeling more yourself, Owen. Suppose we get you up to your bed now, Mr. Vaughan. Feeling strong enough? I'm staying here. I'm quite comfortable, and I'm tired, and I'm sleepy. So if you all just clear out and leave me alone. All right, Mr. Vaughan, we'll leave you alone. Sure there's nothing you want? Peace, sleep, no sisters, no doctors, and no whales. I'll be around if you want me. Listen, Claire, we're clearing up tomorrow, whatever happens. Yes, of course. Now, I'll try and sleep. Remember, I'm here. You're not really going to allow him to leave in the morning? 
No, but it was no use arguing. He'll find out soon enough that he's in no fit state to stand up, let alone travel. If you don't mind, Miss Vaughan, I'd like to stay here tonight to be on hand, just in case he does try to leave. That's very kind of you, David. I'll tell Beatty to make up a bed for you. Thank you. I've just got to make a phone call and then I'd like a word with you. Will you wait for me in the library? Miss Prentice! How is Owen? We are so worried about him. He's much better, thank you. Dr. Davis is with him now. I thought he was going to die. When his mother died, she was the cook, you know. She screamed. Oh, David, how is Owen really? I think he'll be perfectly all right now. You mustn't let him go in the morning. He will, if we don't stop him. He's a strong-minded man. Uh, did Miss Prentice go into the library? Miss Prentice is in the library. She likes books. I want to ask her a few questions about this attack of Mr. Vaughan's. Extreme stomach convulsions. And he said his throat was burning too. What time did the attack start? It was when Gertrude said, Yea, even unto the Lord shalt thou cry. About nine o'clock. What did he have for dinner? We all had the same. Boiled mutton. And <laughs> it would be boiled mutton. <laughs> and and suet pudding. pudding. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier in the day? We both had sandwiches. Did he have anything to drink? Not until just before dinner. We all had a sherry, all except Isabel. Yes, I remember. He said it had a funny taste. You asked me to bring a hypodermic and strychnine injection. I know. Thank you, Thomas. But it was wrong of you to throw that stone at Mr. Owen. Just as it was wrong for him to hit you when you were a little boy. Very wrong. I know you don't forget that. You're listening, Thomas? Hmm. You know the two roads that lead out of this village? You're a clever boy. A very clever boy. One is straight and clean and leads to a busy, happy place. The place your mother takes you when you're good. The other is dark. Dangerous, full of great holes, and leads to death. I hear someone has set up a board warning against this road. Have they, Thomas? Hmm. Supposing someone were to remove that board, anyone might be misled. But if they were good, the Lord would lead them along the straight, safe way even though the board had been removed. But if they were not good, they would take the road that leads to death. I've described the two roads to you to make it easier for you to understand. Getting late. You must be up early. So that you can help Mr. Owen and Miss Prentice along the road they must take. You must go to bed now. In the morning. I'll be up early in the morning. Clever boy. Very clever boy.
You wanted to leave by six, remember? You wanted to leave by six? I wanted to leave. Uh, yes, 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 yes. What time is it? Half past five. Oh. Oh, my mouth tastes horrid. Like a dog's basket. I'd like some champagne. I'd like some brandy. I'd like some brandy in the champagne. I'd like vodka in the brandy. I'd like schnapps. I'd like Alec. Mm. Make me a wee cup of tea with her. Where's the kitchen? Go on the stairs. All right, you get dressed while I make the tea, and then I'll bring the car out. Mm. Oh, what are you wanting in my kitchen? Oh, and well, is Thomas here? I want to see him. He don't want to see you. Nobody wants to see you here. Good morning, Mr. Owen. You'd like a cup of tea, wouldn't you? Yes, but don't wake the whole house up. Don't let the three furies know. So you are going? Mr. Vaughan's going. I'm going with him. Where's the tea? How long am I going to wait anyhow? Shut Sorry about that. Are you all right? Come and sit down. I'm not sitting anywhere. I want to go home. Stone, poison, hit with clocks. What is it? What's happened? Miss Maud leant on the clock. Miss Prentice warned her, but she took no notice. I think you forget she's tone deaf. Are you questioning that statement, Miss Prentice? You ready to go, Mr. Maud? Yes. Owen, you have a doctor and a nurse here. They both know that you ought not to go, that you're not fit to go. Please, don't go. All the best. I'd better come with you. No, thank you, Dr. Davis. You see, I don't trust you either. wrong road. I tried to warn you. But it wasn't the wrong road. The other owner said... No road. Let's get him to hospital. There is no hospital. There's only that house. Blind, deaf, and warped. Owen was right. He said it was a nightmare. But the nightmare's worse because you don't understand. Thomas threw the stone at their car. She told him to do it. The three sisters told him to do it. I know they did. They wanted to kill him when Thomas couldn't kill him. You know what they did, Dr. Davis. They tried to poison him. A blind one put the poison in. The one with the claws. Have you seen her hands? The one with the claws gave it to him, and the deaf one wanted to hear him scream. Who pushed the clock, Dr. Davis? 
I wish you'd never come here. Oh, don't misunderstand me. I know you're charming, cool, clever, efficient, cultivated, but you're... You're stupid, Miss Prentice. The sisters are evil. You're wrong. You're wrong. I know you're wrong. And I know. I know they're not going to let him get out of that house alive. Of that house alive. Now, Miss Prentice, take the stone what Thomas chucked. There is sane people and there is insane people. Well, you couldn't rightly call Thomas either. And he hates Mr. Owen. Take the sherry what he drank. You've seen Cum Glass. It's a little place. There isn't room for two doctors in it. One doctor, one policeman. And we accept each other's expert opinion. Stomachache, says Dr. Davis. Stomachache, agrees Sergeant Flower. But any doctor will tell you that without a proper analysis, it's practically impossible to tell arsenical poisoning from a stomachache. Take the clock what fell. Who was leaning on it? Miss Maud. Miss Maud is what? Miss Maud is deaf. She didn't hear you when you shouted. And last of all, take this morning. Take the road barrier what was moved. And you say you suspect Thomas. But you have no proof. There is no proof for any of your accusations. No proof and no motive against the Mrs. Morgan Bourne. No motive? They can't go back on their word. That's their motive. They promised to provide the money to rebuild Zion Street. But they haven't got the money. Owen's got it. Do you know where Mabley Hughes lives? Yes, number 29. Thank you. Does Mabley Hughes live here? He's over at the colliery. You look a flank bit too. The social system, gentlemen, is iniquitous. It stinks to heaven. Consider from the depths of your not inconsiderable intellects the position of cum glass. Here in cum glass, all social evils are condensed and crystallized. This one village may be regarded as the hub, the nucleus, or the microcosm of all pluto-democratic inevitable inequality. You see my point? Where is injustice? Cum glass. Where does social chauvinism flourish? Cum Glassman! Where do hate and hunger lope like wolves through the nasty streets? Cum Glass. Who is to blame? I ask you, gentlemen, you gentlemen with tails. Mr. Hughes, I must speak to you at once. You don't know me. I'm Claire Prentice, Owen Morgan Bourne's secretary. I saw you in the street the day we came. The day Thomas tried to kill him. I know you, madam. Nice weather we're having. Nobody listens to me. Nobody believes me. The doctor, the policeman, anybody in the village, they're all the same. The Morgan Vaughans can do no wrong. They can only try to murder their brother. Mm. Plenty of sky about. Then I remembered you. I remembered the way you looked at the other people. You don't believe the Morgan Vaughan's a god. You know that... You confuse, madam, my dialectic approach to the rudimental errors of the capitalist system with my own personality. <clears throat> There's clouds like... the semolina. Won't you please listen to me? I it is fundamental deep-rooted schism. I hate the relevance of the Morgan Vaughan fraternity to the body politic, but they're okie dokie. I abominate the principles that motivate their charity, but they're nice. The fruition, my dear young lady, of the seeds socially implanted in the uh, bosoms, if you'll uh, pardon my expression. Mm. 
Go on, Ingels. You're always where you're not wanted. Tell me, Dr. Davis, have they killed your patient yet? I've only got two serious patients, you and Mr. Owen. How is Owen? Oh, he's the kind of man who needs a vet. But if you're not careful, you're going to have a nervous breakdown. You cheap little country doctor. Horning and toting to those three old witches. Oh, I know, they found you. They dug you out, they sent you to school, they made you a doctor, they made you into a little snivelling provincial snob. They made you blind, too. Blind to poverty and filth and dirt and ugliness and... and murder. People often come down to the mining valleys just like you. They say it's bare and ugly. Look where they live. Isn't it grim and grey and horrible? I can't understand how they can put up with it. I can. You can be honourable, Miss Prentice. Miss London. Even when you're scratting like a rat in the guts of the earth. The old men are scarred and twisted. But they haven't lost... I don't care what you call it, love or dignity or anything else. But when a man works hard for himself and for other men, it's the truth. And it isn't the truth of the chapels, or the Morgan Vaughans, or the Trippers. I know. It's true. David, you mustn't hate me too much. But it's not true of this place, not here. This place is dead. No, we're not very well, thank you. We're not looking on the bright side, we're not feeling very cheerful this morning. And we hate the sight of your nice hygienic faces. We're poorly. He's improving. I think you both need a good sound sleep. I'll bring you some... Bring me a relax. <laughs> you need some food, young lady. May I call you young lady? You can call her duck face as far as I'm concerned. I would like to eat. You couldn't bring something up, could you, David? I can't face those sisters. I ought to stay with old Sunshine, too. How is he? Oh, he's much better. I was just going to get some food for Miss Prentice, if I may. Can't she come down here herself? Well, I think I'd rather she stayed with Mr. Vaughan. I want him to get to sleep again. You mean she can't trust him out of her sight? So she's turned you round her little finger, too? I'm disappointed in you, David. Oh, please, Miss Isabel. But Miss Gertrude said if they were good, God would lead them on the straight, safe road, even if the sign had been changed. She shouldn't have said it then. Oh, Beatty. Yes, Mr. David. Would you take some food out to Miss Prentice? I wanted to stay with Mr. Owen for a while. Is that you, David? Yes. Oh, Mr. Vaughan is more comfortable now. He should be asleep again soon. We have no intention of disturbing him. You see, I want him to be as quiet as possible, to see as few people as possible. You've made your wishes perfectly apparent. Morning, Evans. Morning, Doctor. I heard Mr. Morgan Vaughan had an accident this morning. Was he hurt bad? No. A couple of ribs broken, that's all. Had a very lucky escape, though. Any messages? Yes. Mrs. Roberts again. At her age, too. Put me out 25 one-grain luminol tablets, will you? And check through this bag. I'll be back as soon as I see Mrs. Roberts. Very good, Dr. Davis. <laughs> Claire! Claire, come quickly! What's the matter? I have a nightmare. And I've been thinking, too. You see, if they don't get any money when I die, there's no point in their killing me. So I... It came to me in a flash. I'm going to leave all my money to you. Go and ring up that solicitor of mine. What's his name? Uh, 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 Amos Blackguard. No, 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 no. Bynum, no. Bynum, that's it. Tell him. Tell him it's urgent. Tell him to stop whatever he's doing and come over here. I don't care who he's chiseling. This is a matter of life and death. Mrs. Roberts will be another couple of hours, at least. I've time to take that luminol over to the Vaughan's. Have you got it ready? By the way, 
Did you use strychnine last night? No. There were seven tablets left in the bottle. I know, because I checked them. There are only six left now. Are you perfectly certain of that? Of course. I thought you ought to know. They're dangerous things to leave lying about. Mr. Bynan, Mr. Emerus Bynan. Oh, I'm so glad you've got hold of you. I'm speaking for Owen Morgan Vaughan. He's just met with rather a serious accident. He's at his sister's house in Kunglas. Do you know it? Oh, good, because he'd like you to come over here right away. He wants to make a new will. Yes, yes, I'm afraid it is most urgent. When can we expect you? This afternoon. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Byron. Goodbye. If Owen is awake, unable to make a new will, I'm going to see for myself how ill he really is. That's against David's orders. David? Against Dr. David's orders. I accept no orders from anyone in my own house. Isabel, we're being shut out. Why are we being shut out? making a new will. I planned it. Anything happens to me, everything goes to Claire. I'm making her my sole heiress. When did he wake? Just now. He shouldn't have visitors, Miss Vaughan. The quieter he keeps, the quicker those ribs are going to mend. Feel sleepy? No, fed up. Get me a glass of water, please. Perhaps I'd better leave these with you. Give him two now and two more tonight. Uh, Miss Vaughan, I think we'd better leave him now. Dr. Davis, I'm not at all pleased with your behavior. Will you wait for me downstairs? Miss Prentice, I'd like a word with you in my room. Miss Prentice? We came in here, Gertrude, in case you wanted us. You are quite right. What I have to ask Miss Prentice concerns us all. to understand, Miss Prentice, that my brother has sent for his solicitor in order to make a new will, and that under the terms of this will, you are to be sole heiress to the Morgan Vaughan property? Yes. Do you think that we are going to allow this? Do you think that we will allow it? Do you? Do you? <laughs> Are you cold? Yes. Could she have a hot water bottle, Miss Vaughan? Of course. The luminol, what happened to it? I, I don't know. I, I had the box in my hand. I'll find it. David, she's mad. Please don't leave me alone. I'm not going to. Not until you're safely asleep. Not while I'm asleep either. Please not. I'm so frightened. But there's no need to be, my dear. David, you must listen. Oh, I do hope you're better, Miss Prentice. We were so surprised when you fainted. I liked you when you fainted. Did you find the pills Miss Prentice mm -hmm. had in her hand? Yes, I've got them. Could I have a glass of water, please? Take these. 
Shall I take those? Uh, no. Uh, we'll leave Miss Prentice now. I want her to get some sleep. Thank you, Beatty. Yes? Oh, tell him I'm coming right away. Uh, no, I've got my bag with me. Uh, yes, I think I found it. Right, goodbye. Oh, uh, Miss Vaughan, I'm called away on a case. I'm afraid I shan't be back until this evening. They should sleep for some time. I shan't disturb them. It's cold and dank upstairs. I've told Thomas to put on the heating. Thanks. What are those strychnine tablets? Yes, do you want them? You found it? Yes. I'd like to see the last prescription I gave Miss Isabel Morgan Vaughan. The arsenic for rheumatoid arthritis? Uh, yes. I um, want to check the strength that we're giving her at the moment. Is she responding to the treatment? Oh, fairly well. Thanks. I'll be up at Molai's house if I'm wanted. Very good, Doctor. The ladies are at the Institute, Dr. David. It is their afternoon. I think Mr. Owen and Miss Prentice are still sleeping. I was told not to disturb them. Told me to she said it would eat quicker.
Someone's been playing tricks with the heating, dangerous tricks. Coke fumes were flowing directly through to Mr. Owens and Miss Clare's rooms. They were asleep, under a sleeping draught, both of them. If I hadn't come back when I did, they'd have been dead in an hour. Who did it, Beatty? I mean to know. Was it Thomas? No. Thomas who threw the stone at Mr. Owen? No. Thomas who moved the barrier this morning? You're going to tell me. One of you. Oh, my gosh, Madness, then. You think because I am tied to this house with the son who is simple that I am one of them. Poor Beatty. That nobody will take in because of him. Miss Gertrude went down to the stove. Beatty, may I have a cup of tea, please? Yes, miss. I'll bring it in to you. Do you believe me now? Beatty? No, David. Oh, you're back much sooner than you expected. Yes, a good deal sooner than any of us expected. Well, you've managed to persuade Miss Prentice to leave her sick bed. That was clever of you. Now we can all have tea together. Well, if I sit down. There's a nasty shock it must have been. All of us in the village were so distressed to hear of the accident. We bled for you. Owen oh, Morgan Vaughan. You cannot understand how beloved the Morgan Vaughans are. A stay and salvation. I think I'd better lie down for a bit. Beatty was just going to bring tea. She can take it up to her. As you wish. David, we're trapped. We can't stand it. No, we're not. As soon as I've taken you upstairs, I'm going out. I can't telephone from here, but I've got to get an ambulance for Mr. Vaughan. You'll have to look after him while I'm away. No, no, I'm... Price will go on talking him there for hours. I know him. And they can't do anything to either of you while he's still here. Remember that. Thank you, Gertrude. I've seen the Borough Council and sat through interminable meetings. They flatly refused to rebuild the cottages. Gertrude went for a walk this morning all by herself right down to the gate. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, what was their attitude? They say the village is finished now that the mine is worked out. They say it's dead. It's not a place to live in at all. It's only for old people to die in. Therefore, it's not worthwhile rebuilding. They will find accommodation for the victims in another parish. So the old are to be deprived of their last privilege. They are not to be allowed to spend their declining years in their own valley. I'm afraid he's far too ill. But he can't be too ill to see me, Miss Morgan Vaughan. He wanted me to alter his will. It's going to cost him something, too. Oh. I'm Claire Prentice. I spoke to you this morning. I recognize that very charming voice, soprano. Mr. Vaughan would like to see you right away. Soprano like a madam. Dying, is he? No, no, we hope. Now about witnesses. This is Evan Evans, Miss Prentice, one of my clocks. I took the precaution of bringing him along to act in that very capacity. Usually doing a case of this kind. Client's last will and testament made in the bosom of his family. Apt to be awkward. You understand me? Uh, you're an outsider, aren't you, Miss Prentice? So we'll use you as second witness. I'm afraid not, and you'll soon understand why. Beneficiary? That's one of the reasons why I've been trying to prevent you from seeing my brother in his present condition. Owing to his accident, I'm afraid he's not quite normal. You mean he's not in his right mind? I think that is so. Where's the doctor? He'll be back any time now. Excellent. If I am in doubt as to his mental condition, I can expect the doctor... Yes. Who's that fellow? Oh, that's Mr. Price, the Baptist minister. Baptist? Well, well. Mr. Price, would you be so accommodating as to accompany me upstairs? Mr. Owen Morgan Vaughan is making a new will. No! Who says I'm not in my right mind? You, your forensic ferret? It's a point, Mr. Vaughan. The will might be contested on those grounds. I, for one, contest your decision now, Mr. Owen. Oh? I beg you to take thought before you make this will. Your sisters will be left destitute. 
You guys! Now, have you ever known Mr. Vaughan refuse his sisters any reasonable request? Has he ever left them destitute? Has it never occurred to you that in making this will, they are still his foremost charge? You know nothing about his business affairs. Suppose he were in disastrous financial circumstances and this was the only way of saving his sisters from becoming involved. I'm disappointed in you, Mr. Price. You are the last person I should have suspected of harboring uncharitable thoughts. And a Baptist minister, too. I apologize, Mr. Owen. Mm. Is it all right? No, it can't be here before tomorrow morning. We'll have to stay the night. Oh, David, I'm so glad you've come. We're desperately worried about Owen. You said he was too ill to see us, yet Miss Prentice has sent three men into his room to talk business with him. Go and send them away at once. It's your responsibility. I must ask you gentlemen to leave this room at once. Mr. Vaughan is a very sick man. We are just leaving, Doctor. Good day, Mr. Morgan Vaughan. Good day, Mr. Owen. You don't obey my instructions, Mr. Vaughan. No, but I saved my life. You lift the village, Price. We will excuse you for leaving us, Mr. Price. I am quite aware it must be very embarrassing for you. I hope you found where your duty lay. I did, Miss Gertrude. I am convinced your brother is acting for the best. Good night, Miss Gertrude. Now, Miss Prentice, I'm going to take you to your room. You must be worn out. Come with me. I suggest you take off your clothes and get straight into bed. No. I only want to rest for an hour or so. I'll be all right. As you wish. I'll see you're left undisturbed. but I couldn't get any sense out of any of them. What were you all doing in Mr. Owen's room? Mr. Owen was making a new will. I was one of the witnesses. I must admit I had some serious misgivings at first. And it seemed strange he should wish to leave all his money to his secretary. Miss Prentice? Yes, he... So that's what he meant when he said he'd saved his life. He's made himself safe at her expense. It's her life that's in danger now. She mustn't be left up there alone.
Francis. Miss Prentice. Yes? I'm here. It's Owen. And we are gathered here on this most mournful occasion to pay our last respects to the departed for the sins they have committed. And none of us is free from sin, my people. We can only pray for their forgiveness. But let us never in cum glass forget the dignity, the great dignity the great love, the genial warmth, and the profound humanity of those dear ladies, Gertrude, Isabel, and more. Now with us, no more. Yeah. 